you're in the office. You're at, you're working, man. That's right. What's Some going of us on? are working. I mean, we're not just sitting at home. I know you were laying on that bed not too long ago. Yeah, we were watching a little. Uh, Nora and I were watching a, uh, Robin Hood, uh, the original. <laughs> Well, I, either way, it is fantastic to be back in the office. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we started our voluntary summer workouts this week, and that is fantastic. Literally, it is the first time since March where we've had formal, organized workouts with our student athletes. Voluntary, they, they get to choose whether they come or not. And it started on Tuesday. Coach Anderson has been put together a, 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 an outstanding uh, return I guess I would say to to the conditioning and strength, and we're 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 we got up early. How early? How early is <laughs> early? Because I, I have a different definition of early than most people. Well, today was a little bit later than Tuesday, our first day, because we wanted to make sure we had everything ready to go. We wanted it to be smooth for our student athletes, so we met here at four forty-five a.m. on Tuesday. Today we were a little bit later, and we were laughing in the athletic training room, the ATR, as we like to call it, about how much sleep we actually got the night before, because all of us just have that fear, and I'm sure many of you do too, when you've got something early the next morning, it's really important to you, and you don't want to oversleep, then you wake up. So some people woke up at 2 o'clock and couldn't go back to sleep. I woke up at 424, couldn't go back to sleep, because I could have got another 15 minutes in there, like I would have done back when I was a college student. Uh, instead, I was like, all right, I'm awake, uh, and I got up. So earlier than I normally get up, John Webke. That, that, is, that is so early. <laughs> it is. Um, it, so, so walk me through. You know, you, you get there at 4, 445. You're laughing with Travis and, and our athletic training staff. Um, you know, walk me through that process of what a student athlete is going through right now to get back to working out towards their goals of, comp of competing as a dragon. You bet. Well, we've got several different areas that we're working out in. So we enter, enter the NEMS at Complex, depending on whether you're on a practice football field or whether you're on Shields Field, you come in a different entrance. So we've asked all our student athletes to get there a little bit early because we do some COVID screening uh, right when they get there. Uh, and so the, I was at the North Gate coming into Shields Field with Keith Wiedrich this morning. Keith had the thermometer gun. I had the checklist and our student athletes, like I said, we asked them to get there about 10 minutes early. They pull up, we've got cones set out to keep them socially distant. And we've got a neat little link uh, that we've sent them and set up for them on their phone. So it's got five basic questions uh, regarding symptoms, et cetera, that we, that we have them fill out and submit every day. They show us the answers to that. Keith gets them with the thermometer to make sure we're within that right area. And then we send them on out onto the turf and uh, they get loosened up a little bit. And Coach Anderson, Coach Cox are, are out there working with them and take them through the paces, so to speak. One of the things that where I say Coach Anderson has done outstanding work, he and Andy Scott and Rhonda Peterson and Keith Wiedrich really did a fair amount of research because we have been off since March, which is not typical, about what we need to be watching out for, what we need to be looking out for. And one of the parts that they've come up with. One of the technical buzzwords is detraining that happens as our student athletes aren't in that formal training place. And so trying to get a gauge of what their fitness level is, what their conditioning level is, so we can meet them where they're at and start to get them back in into uh, prime shape, so to speak. Well, what, what, why is that a big deal? What, what is detraining and why is that, you know, a scary thing? Right. Well, so I, in, in my limited knowledge, and that really comes from listening to those smart people talking about it, a big part of where injuries happen are stop, starts, and turns. And so it's getting into that place where we are uh, taking measured controls to get into stop, starts, and turns and escalating the speed that we're doing it at and making sure all the muscles and everything are, are loose and ready to go and stronger. And Travis can talk about it all day long. So could Andy and Rhonda and Keith. That's about my extent of it, but it is trying to uh, get them uh, on, a, on a very intentional pace, uh, picking up and adding the things that they're doing. So this week for our fall sports, it is the outdoor, uh, I'm not sure if I would call it conditioning, it's more athletic movement in trying to make sure that they've been uh, loosened up and ready to go before they get into the weight room next week. And then we'll be introducing our winner in our spring sports 
uh, next week into the strength, uh, into the conditioning piece so that they can start moving around and then we'll get them into the weight room. But it is, it's very methodical, the process that we're going through right now, Webby. It sounds like a lot of different steps to make sure that our goal is met, which we've discussed before on this show, is you know, the safe return to competition here this fall. Um, there's, there's a lot of moving parts in getting back to workouts. You've had a couple of days now. Uh, how, how, and you're there right now. So yep. um, how's it going for the first few days? What's the reactions from the student athletes like and, and from Travis and, and the athletic training staff on how they feel uh, the execution have you tweaked anything or is it is it been pretty solid oh there's there's continual <laughs> tweaks going on uh, there's continual tweaks going on because we haven't necessarily taken all these steps before right. and then things are changing both at the state and the system level uh, turning the dial as governor walls likes to say as the dial gets turned we can adjust some of our pieces uh, this week uh, one of the things that's getting tweaked and that we did is previous when we were setting this up we were only allowed to gather in groups of 10 or less uh, the dial got turned on that up to 25 but we stayed in the 10 or less just because we didn't have have time to make sure we could make all the adjustments so we are making those tweaks as they're happening on those outside influences on our workouts and then we're trying to tweak things on the inside too to make it smoother for our student athletes i think today the check-in uh, in the second group lasted about two minutes to get those nine student athletes through the gate, temperature taken, all that sort of stuff. So I feel like we're in pretty good shape on that sort of stuff, Webby. And as you asked, how, how are people feeling? What are reaction of our student athletes? I mean, frankly, we're all fired up in, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, like, I, like I said, we have not been in formal organized workouts since last March. Athletics, although we all work in a different realm in it, we're all passionate about it. Uh, you know, Andy Scott and Rhonda and, and Keith and that athletic training and, and the support place that that's in. Coach Anderson actually getting to be out there blowing the whistle, you know, giving instructions, pat, not patting people on the back because we are socially distanced, but encouraging and using those encouraging words and, and, and pushing our student athletes. It's been a fun couple of days. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, I can just see Travis's grin from ear to ear. Um, we do have a, a question that has popped in through through Facebook. Um, do the players have to be quarantined for any period of time before they can participate in workouts? Yep. Th so we thanks, are definitely. Jim. Yeah, thanks, Jim. We are definitely operating in that in that space in a quarantine space where we have asked our student athletes to self quarantine in the Fargo Moorhead area um, for a period of time. That recommendation has changed, so we've been between seven and fourteen days, seven days at a minimum. And they also have to fill out a fairly lengthy uh, survey about where they've been, what they've been doing, what symptoms, anybody they've been around that has been, had the symptoms, et cetera. And so we have been pretty deep on that side. I can only imagine a, as a 20 year old, if I can remember back that far, you know, they've got about four or five different forms we're asking them to fill out. We've done it uh, technology wise, really easy to do to just scroll through on their phone and, and answer those questions. But it is fairly lengthy, which isn't, which isn't most, the most fun, but it is definitely worth it to be able to get in and, and work out. The next thing that we'll be adding, Webby, next week, as well as the actual weight room, the NCAA has allowed us to do voluntary individual skill instruction workouts throughout the summer, which isn't typical for team sports. So now we're able to jump into that space too. So that means there's another form along the way but it allows our student athletes to request uh, a workout a skill workout with their coach so it's not like live competition where they're playing for example basketball they're not playing five on five but our student athletes can make a request and have their coach come in and work on their shooting or work on some specific skill instruction things in that place so we'll be kicking that off next week too awesome. so as we get get geared up as you yeah. can tell i'm excited and it's hard. It's hard not excited. to get fired up about it. Um, to be to be honest, it it feels so weird. Uh, usually in the summertime, the you, people are around all the time, and in the gym working out, playing pickup games. Um, you know, out on the field throwing routes and passes, and it's just I know it is such an early beginning point to getting anywhere close to that. So it's interesting to see how this is going, um, and what the next couple of steps are as far as getting into the weight room 
individual workouts. And then, you know, eventually we would like to end with some competition. And I see Mr. Don Growth is in there watching right now on Facebook. Um, and Mr. Cook just is enjoying this as well for Chris Cook. But, you know, I see Don and I know he's itching to watch some dragon football. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know it. So right. what, what has to happen kind of here until we get to that moment where we can watch the dragons on the field again? Well, as we've talked about in the past, the NCAA has made some adjustments to our, our playing season where we've reduced our games just a little bit. Now we're into that place about the playing and practice uh, co conversation. So from a Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference, we have methodically worked our way through about adjusting our schedules. So we now have a, a slightly different 10-game 10 10 game football schedule, 20-game volleyball schedule, and it just kind of goes on, on down the line. And as we work our way through that process, it, it started out in a working group, it moved to the athletic administrators, and now in, has incrementally been approved by the presidents. So we do have NSIC approved uh, schedules for most of our fall and winter sports. Nice. The, the wild card in the mix, the NCAA, is also having conversations about playing in practice season. Uh, lots of different thoughts and opinions out there. And much like with the number of games that are getting played, the NCAA did a, a widespread survey between presidents and athletic administrators about when practice should start, when it should end in the fall for the fall sports. And so as those surveys come in, there's three different, four different groups, five different groups that look at it. So the membership committee, the legislative committee, um, the championships committee, We'll take a look at that, make some recommendations. Then the conference commissioners, the direct Division II Athletic Directors Association will chime in and, and make some recommendations about what that should look like as we move forward in trying to get our fall seasons safely started and get as many games in as we possibly can. How's that's that for a long-winded answer? It's not, it's not long-winded. I mean, that's – we know it's not an easy process to get back to that point as we see – the dial for the state of Minnesota and Governor Walls and sports is at the very far blowing your ears out decibels of that dial. And so how to integrate sports as that dial turns as much as we safely can is, as you have really detailed for us today, uh, a complicated, uh, kind of slow, but for good reason process. And Still a lot is unknown, um, but you know, what kind of things are, are we certain of? I mean, like you just said, we're certain we have a fall schedule, we're certain we have a winter schedule, um, but as we all know, this is still a very fluid situation. And so what kind of things are you, are you kind of concerned about? Obviously, the worst case scenario, a student athlete gets COVID. You know, what, right. what happens in that situation um, this summer and this fall is probably too far to consider that, but what happens right now if one of those students who are working out catches COVID? Yep, we got a couple different things in place. Actually, I think right now as we speak, Andy Scott is meeting with our, our team physician, Dr. Bronigal, about what our, what our steps are gonna be if someone does have COVID and, and how we're gonna manage that. We've also had that conversation at, at a campus level. If we do have students, and how we might quarantine them and what that piece would look like. So we've got those conversations are happening. And from a worry standpoint, I don't, I'm, that's probably not top of mind worry for me. Top of mind concern for me right now is trying to help our student athletes understand our goal to be specific. Our goal is to help our student athletes safely and healthily prepare for the 2021 season. And so it's not about not, 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 not getting COVID. It is about trying to change our habits and put ourselves in a position uh, to keep us away from getting it. And so it's the focus is on what we can do. And so the things that we can do, lots of hand washing, the social distancing, and just being aware that it's not about just getting here and working out right now. That's an important part and that's going to help us prepare. But a bigger part is getting in, creating the habits in our daily lives because COVID is not going to go away who knows when we're going to have a vaccine. It's about creating a, a daily routine that limits uh, your risk of catching it so that you can do the thing that you love, which is play the sport. 
So that's probably top of mind concern right now is just trying to help not only our, our student athletes, but our coaches understand that and then really try and create the environment that minimizes the risk. I mean, Chad Marks and I moved some tables in our lobby around today to make sure that we are socially distanced on that side of things. And so we're talking about the, the spray bottles from a disinfectant standpoint, making sure we have hand sanitizer by the entrances to NEMSIC and make sure we have all those things ready just really to put ourselves in a place where we can focus on the habits that are going to minimize the chance of any of our student athletes contracting COVID. Yeah. And one other question that, um, that came through this week is, is obviously um, when we can compete uh, having fans in the stands. And as we see that dial turn up, it's percentages of occupancy, uh, small groups as, as you're, you're discussing here as well. Um, I was asked, sorry, I'm going to defer to questions that are better than mine from Denise, Go, from the Denise Gores line. All right. Just, hey, it doesn't take much, Webber, to get a question better than yours, buddy. And, and I think you, you might have touched it at SOAR or something like that, but he, she was asked yesterday about plans for club sports. You know, maybe this has been discussed at, at this point. Have you had any discussions about club sports in the EMT world and things like that? And Denise is laughing at us right now. <laughs> yep. So, so there's two things that happened. There is a work group that is, is athletics, club sports, gyms, wellness, other activities on campus. And what we did is we split it into two different sections. So before August 1st and after August 1st. So I think early next week, our wellness center will be reopening, which is where club sports and intramurals are housed. That doesn't happen. Those activities don't happen during the summer, but we are getting into the conversation about what that's going to look like in the fall. Because the first priority was to get ready and, and have our I's dotted and T's crossed for through August 1st so we could uh, offer as many opportunities to students across our campus as, as possibly can, and we've got that done. And so now it's really, what does it look like in the fall when we're, we're back on campus for classes and all of those other activities that are happening? So not a specific question, but we do have, ha have are having those conversations. Okay, another question from Zoom this time. Uh, what's going to happen with new freshman athletes coming from out of town, out of the Fargo area before fall camp? Are they still going to have to do the, that quarantine time period? Um, so are they going to have to come earlier than normal for that fall camp period? Right. So that, that's one of those moving targets. What is going to be the acceptable uh, procedure and policy from our state, et cetera? And no, we won't be bringing – anybody to campus early for our new freshmen. Uh, we might be asking you to self-quarantine at home, really limit who, where you're around and, and who you're around um, and before you come. And we do start early, uh, earlier than school starts sometimes. Uh, so we'll see where that place falls, where that falls into place. But at, at the end of the day, from our environment and division two and all of those pieces, we won't be bringing our new entering uh, student athletes in seven to 14 days. We'll just be asking them to be self-quarantined, be highly respectful of where they're spending their time before they come to Moorhead. Because it's all about, as we bring people in from all over the place, it is about minimizing uh, the opportunity and the chances to exchange those germs and the droplets and all the things we've been hearing about lately. Yeah, and, and some of the scheduling changes, you know, like football starting a little bit later it is going to impact not that need to be so early. And like you said, still ongoing conversations with the NCAA on, you know, when different things are going to start and stop as far as uh, practice seasons. So um, I'm going to take that thread that that question was on with freshmen and recruiting. Yep. Um, obviously that's a, a thing that has begun this month of, you know, coaches being able to, to recruit. So what is recruiting look like, um, as we start to turn that dial up and, and have, uh, more students and, and prospective student athletes on campus? Well, specifically, there's a couple things that have happened in the past couple of days. So the NCAA quiet period, and that means our coaches can't do off-campus recruiting. At the same time, we can do on-campus recruiting and working with admissions and following the protocol our admissions department has put in place to have camp students on campus. You know, we modified slightly to hit athletics, but we're in that place now where we, our coaches in their recruiting process can bring prospective student athletes to campus. Now granted there are, it's, it's a little bit out of the norm. 
not meeting in office spaces, trying to be in a place where we can physically distance where they're six feet apart and, and not having a ton of people around. It's a smaller group. It's the prospective student athlete, and the guests they might bring. Still needs to be a group under 10, including the coaches. But that stuff is, is starting to kick off. I know those high school prospects, they're excited. You know, they've been, they dream, and their dream is to play college athletics. And we're trying to figure out if it's a good fit. And it's awesome and imperative that we get them to campus so they can have some face-to-face -face interaction with our coaches and also see all the great things that Dragon Athletics has to offer. Yeah, and the academic side too. I mean, making sure that, that, that it's a fit holistically for them on the academic side and getting on campus. And just, I know when I set foot on campus for the first time, it just felt right. I mean, and, and you kind of have to be in that space to feel that this could be my home for the next four or five years. And it's, it's in, encouraging to see that start to open up, um, you know, seeing uh, uh, admissions, having uh, the tours starting up again here soon. Um, it's, it's really encouraging to see all that activity. But, you know, we only have six minutes left in our, our lunch cast. What's for lunch, Doug Peters? You know, I'm not sure what's for lunch right now, Webby. It's going to be something good, though, because I'm hungry, because I got up really early. <laughs> I, breakfast was a long – that was a distant memory. So it's going to be something good. There's, there's no doubt about that. But, Webby, you hit on something. You talked about the academic side. You, do you know what you've put out there in the past couple of days that gets me fired up? Um, I bet it has something to do with the team GPAs. Yeah, the team GPAs is awesome. Granted, we were in a unique situation in the spring, and our goal was to help our and support our student athletes being academically successful, making sure they didn't take a step backwards. And granted, I know there were some pass fail options and some different pieces out there, but all time high athletic department GPA of a 3.46, if I recall correctly. I'm not mm -hmm. exactly perfect on those numbers. But that's awesome. Football had a 3.25. Women's basketball was in the 3.68 range. Wow. Out, outstanding performance by our student athletes in the spring in some very, um, I would just say, difficult circumstances. Right. Yeah, I, I was a professor adjusting to that as well. And to, to see, um, you know, student athletes pick that up um, in, in an unknown time with a lot of things going, not just academically learning to learn a different way, but, but mentally, uh, the heavy load that we, we talk about a lot that a student athlete carries in balancing everything and all the pressures and, and stresses um, to see the academic success, to see the perseverance there is really encouraging that, that we can do this under any circumstances. That's right. There's no doubt about that because the end game out of this piece is a fantastic experience and a degree at the end. And that that the steps of being academically successful are are important to that and there's been a lot of instructors um, that that have helped our student athletes be successful in that it was kind of funny you know I mean, you mentioned denise Gorsline. i was uh messaging with her the other night and she was talking about a, a student athlete she had in class that had, had to give a speech and the speech was on um well it was on throwing a football <laughs> so, so it's fun to see our our student athletes cross mixing um, preparing themselves to be successful after athletics and being able to tie in the things that they love and they're passionate about. Yeah, it, it's, it's fun. Um, I have a few, had a few student athletes in my class and it, it was always great to see them integrate. And I do sports marketing classes and sports promotions and production, integrate the sport they love. And so if it was a swimmer, uh, planning a swimming promotion, you know, around, you know, how to make swimming better and, and being able to have great dialogue on, you know, not just, having a, a, an academic experience, but using that academic experience to improve the athletic experience. Uh, it's just so cool to see those, those uh, interminglings of passion and education for the ultimate passion is creating a successful and rewarding career in the future. But as we wind up with a couple minutes left in the show, taking any final questions from our, I see Bruce Eiserman's over there in Zoom. Hi, Bruce, Sean B. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, a few other guests over in Facebook. Um, if you have any final questions, please let us know. But Doug, I got to ask one last question. What are you most fired up about right now in our Fired Up Lunch Cast? Hey, then we're doing the Fired Up Lunch Cast. In, yeah, baby. in my mind, I'm thinking about, we're going to do it next week. Now, do we do it at noon or do we do it more at the end of the workday, Webby? What you've got to tell you, does anybody that's listening have an opinion on that? 
What's your initial response to that web? New I, order at the end of the workday. I like I like the lunch cast. I really do. I, it's a great time for us to to get together. I think in our schedules as we do these Zoom marathon meetings. And uh, so far, the audience has uh, given us a lot more questions than the first time we did it at that hour. So I'll say we're going to go live next week. But I'm going to do my best to bring a guest because there's only so much of this that people can take. So that, um, that's right. We did that. We we were working on a guest. And you know, it gives me an opportunity just as we close off. Uh, we are working to try and get Coach Carla Nelson to talk a little women's basketball, but even more fun to talk about the Dragons Women's Scramble, which is a golf tournament we'll be playing on July 7th. If you're watching this, I know you've got some connection to technology. If you're interested in playing that, uh, direct message her on Facebook. Let her know that she's interested, and she'll work with you to get that registered. We have a fantastic sponsor in Valley Imports. They are a great friend of ours, and they're helping make this thing happen. And although it won't be the way it always has been, we are going to get out there, enjoy a fantastic day of golf, and support the Dragons. So with that, Webby, thank you so much for the time today. And when am I going to see you? Thank you. You're going to see me tomorrow, sir. We're going to have lunch. We're going to talk about uh, new and innovative ways to, to help Dragon Athletics out and uh, maybe talk to our friends at Shields at about 2 o'clock. That's right. That's going to happen. We're going to have lunch, Buffalo Wild Wings. I'm already looking forward to it. I haven't had Wild Wings in a while. They're one of our great sponsors, so we're going to have a little bit of lunch with that. But what I was really looking for is, Webby, I will see you right here next week, next Thursday at 12 noon again. Yeah, we work together too, but we'll, we'll be here with you and all of our fans here uh, next week. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for listening to the Fired Up Lunchcast, and uh, we'll see you next week. <laughs>